Yo brodies, what's up? It has been a while since I made a proper video as I wanted to take some break which helped a lot to recharge my enthusiasm when it comes to content creation. And now that we're back, I want to share with you yet another gaming laptop review as we take a look at the 2022 version of the ASUS Tough Gaming F15. The ASUS Tough Gaming F15 2022 offers a lot of improvement from its predecessor with a more powerful 12th gen Intel Core i7 12700H processor, an improved version of the NVIDIA GeForce RTX 3060 with a higher TGP, better display now up to 300Hz refresh rate with higher color accuracy, brightness levels, and response times. This new version also features the latest and fastest DDR5 memory up to 4800 MHz and most importantly has an MUX switch to fully take advantage of the graphics power. I'm excited to share my thoughts with you, so let's get into it. Now before anything else, let me share with you a quick unboxing experience. Included in the package is a nice and rugged ASUS Tough laptop bag with an ample amount of space and padding. Good overall bonus I would say. The packaging is a pretty simple brown box with tons of details about the laptop and inside it we have some nice ASUS Tough stickers, the laptop itself, some paperwork including the user guide, and an ASUS Tough M5 gaming mouse which is pretty awesome. So you're pretty much good to play after unboxing your spanking new gaming laptop. And lastly we have the 240 watts power brick and its cable. Now at first look and touch, in true ASUS Tough fashion, the ASUS Tough Gaming F15 looks quite minimal while maintaining the rugged military design language it is known for. Looking from the top, we have a nice smooth matte finish and at first, I thought the logo and this part have some texture but it wasn't the case, it is also smooth like the rest of the surface. We also have a lip here that helps with lifting the display and I'll show you later why this exists. I also like the subtle chamfered edges and the slight curve on the corners as well as this cutout at the back which allows the LED indicators to be visible while the lid is closed. A clever design idea indeed. Turning it to the bottom, this is where we can see most of that military-like aesthetic with an ample amount of rubber feet and rugged patterns all around. The steer speakers are also located here at the bottom. I also appreciate this little red rubber feet adding more support. Now in terms of the cooling design, the new ASUS Tough Gaming F15 has two arc flow fans one for the CPU and one for the GPU, and each fan features 84 blades that vary in terms of thickness for a more efficient airflow while maintaining relatively noise levels. In addition, it has 4 ventilations and one more heat pipe compared to the previous model for a total of 5 heat pipes. Overall, it is made out of durable plastic and aluminum and is lighter and slimmer than its predecessor. Now looking at the front side, again we can see the lip at the center that allows us to open the lid easier and you can actually open it using just one hand. On the right side, we have a Kensington lock slot, the excess for the GPU, and the USB 3.2 Gen 1 Type-A port. On the other side, we have the excess for the CPU, the power port, an Ethernet port, HDMI 2.0B port, a Thunderbolt 4 port with DisplayPort 1.4, one USB 3.2 Gen 2 Type-C port also with DisplayPort 1.4 and external G-Sync, one USB 3.2 Gen 1 Type-A port, and a 3.5mm audio combo jack. Finally, looking at the back side, we have two more access ventilation and if you look closely, you'll see the actual fins of the heatsink and it looks like we also have some smaller ventilation across the center. Overall, the ASUS Tough Gaming F15 has an ample amount of ventilation and input and output ports. And the key difference here compared to the older model is the additional USB 3.2 Gen 2 Type-C port. Now opening the lid reveals the integrated peripherals of the ASUS Tough Gaming F15. Starting with the keyboard, we have a full-size layout here that includes a dedicated numpad, arrow keys albeit smaller than usual, a regular size control key, function rows and we also have some additional shortcut keys here up top. And most importantly, a dedicated power button. In terms of the keyboard itself, this is probably one of the best laptop keyboards that I've tried so far with a very pronounced tactile feedback and substantial travel distance. The typing experience is fairly satisfying. Of course, it has RGB lighting that you can further customize using the ASUS Armory Crate software. By the way, here in the upper right corner, we have an additional grill type design but honestly, I'm not sure what's the purpose of this as it doesn't spit out either hot air or sound, possibly just an additional design. Again, here at the top center, we have the LED indicators that are also visible even when the lid is closed. Now going back to the peripherals, we have a 26% larger trackpad that supports gestures and has a smooth surface and crispy tactile feedback. We also have a tough logo here but doesn't seem to do anything. Now before we move on to the display and performance benchmarks, let me give you a quick rundown of the hardware specifications. 
The 2022 version of the ASUS Tough Gaming F15 is now powered by the latest 12th Gen Intel Core i7 12700H processor with an NVIDIA GeForce RTX 3060, the latest DDR5 4800 MHz memory, expandable to 32GB, and it also has two SSD slots, one is upgradable up to 1TB storage. And as I pointed out earlier, it now has an MUX switch to fully take advantage of the GPU. Now, in terms of the display, unlike the previous version which only has a 144Hz refresh rate, 65% sRGB coverage, 250 nits of brightness, and 25 milliseconds response time, this new version features a 300Hz refresh rate, 100% sRGB coverage with up to 300 nits of brightness, and 3 milliseconds response time. That's a huge improvement especially since this machine is capable of pushing frames beyond 144fps. And as you can see, the bezels are quite thin especially on the top and on the sides, with the exception of the bottom bezel as it's quite thick but normal nonetheless. Now, I showed you earlier that we have a lip on the center of the lid, and I think one of the reasons for that is to accommodate the HD webcam and the microphone array. Or it could just be really for the design, as I'm pretty sure they can fit those without adding the lip like other laptops do. Now, in terms of the actual display quality, on paper, it should cover up to 100% sRGB, but as per my testing, using the Data Color Spider X Pro, which I conducted the testing twice, this laptop covers 97% sRGB, 69% NTSC, 73% Adobe RGB, and 74% P3 Color Gamut, which is still pretty good and ideal for media consumption, productivity, and gaming, especially with a decently fast panel. And thanks to the IPS panel, the viewing angles are pretty good, even on an extreme angle like this. The colors are vibrant, with decent contrast levels, making everything pop, and the overall image quality is really good and passes my personal taste. However, I cannot say the same with regards to the speakers. These tier speakers, while decent and do the job done, are nothing to write home about. In my honest opinion, it can get quite loud, but I feel like it is a bit muddy and lacks some punch on the low end. The location underneath the chassis without much room to work with is probably not that ideal to provide a better overall engaging and immersive sound. Now finally, let's move on to the juicy part of this review, which is the performance and benchmarks. As usual, I'll pop my benchmarking methodology first so that you can have a better understanding of how I came up with these results. Since I don't have a competing or similar laptop to compare this with, I focus more on the differences in terms of overall performance and thermals between the three different modes, silent, performance, and turbo, so you can have an idea of how to fully take advantage of this laptop. But before I show you some charts, let me show you around the ASUS Armory Crate software and see what tools we have for tweaking the performance of the ASUS Tough Gaming F15. So, inside the software, we have different presets to quickly choose from, the default window settings, the silent mode which limits the performance of both the CPU and GPU and limits the FPS to 60 to maintain a low noise level of around 35 decibels. It will also turn into a passive cooling mode when the thermals go below 50 degrees for a super quiet working environment. We also have the performance mode with pretty much the same performance level as the turbo mode but with lower noise levels, essentially a more balanced option. The turbo mode pushes the performance to the highest level without restrictions on the fan speed, clock speed, and power limits. It even adds 50 MHz overclocking for the GPU, basically balls to the walls. Now the manual mode allows you to manually adjust the power limit for the CPU, thermal limit for the GPU, and fan speed for both. It is also worth noting that turbo mode is only available when the laptop is plugged in. Also, a system restart is required whenever you change between MS Hybrid mode and the discrete GPU mode. Essentially, MS Hybrid automatically switches between integrated graphics and the RTX 3060 to prolong battery life, while discrete GPU mode uses the RTX 3060 directly for better performance. Now, here's a quick sound test for the fan noise level of the ASUS Tough Gaming F15. Alright, so now that you have a good understanding of the different modes of this laptop, let's finally check out some charts, shall we? Let's start with how the performance varies with each mode in one of the easiest tests to replicate, the 3D Mark benchmarks. As you can see, for the most part, 
there is a significant difference in terms of performance especially on the CPU score between the three modes with the turbo as expected providing the best possible result in return for louder noise levels. The same can be said for the performance between the MS Hybrid mode and the discrete GPU mode, albeit just a slight improvement on some tests. But I'll take a slight increase in performance knowing that my laptop is running at its full potential, especially if I'm connected with AC power all the time and wearing a headphone. Next is another easy benchmark to replicate, which is PC Mark 10. Here we can see that the results between performance mode and turbo mode is pretty close to each other because as I've pointed out earlier, both are essentially the same in terms of performance but the performance mode considers the acoustics in return of a little bit more heat compared to turbo mode that doesn't care at all about any restrictions and just pushes the laptop up to 11. Now let's discuss the performance of the new ASUS Tough Gaming F15 in all Cinebench benchmarks as well as in Intel Extreme Tuning Utility, both of which you can easily try on your own Intel powered system. This is where things get a little bit toasty, literally and figuratively. Okay, so while the thermals of the 12th gen Intel Core i7 12700H spike a bit hot at max on all three Cinebench benchmarks, the average temperature is actually quite decent at only around 51 to 85 degrees. You can also see here that for the most part, the thermals of the performance mode are hotter than in turbo mode, which is what we expect. Now, even with those numbers in terms of the temperature, the overall score results are pretty much what we expect and on par with most data available online. Again, there is a significant difference in terms of performance between these three modes and are quite consistent across the board. Now, in both XTU and XTU2 benchmarks in Intel Extreme Tuning Utility, which pushes the processor to its limit at a relatively burst period, the thermals are quite hot reaching the 90s but are averaging pretty decent at around 47 to 82 degrees. Now, to be honest, I observed some slight thermal and power throttling during the test but again, the final score pretty much checks out here with good core clocks to boot. And when the system is idle, it is also relatively cool, especially in turbo mode at only around 39 degrees. Now, just to make sure the system is stable, I did a few stress tests using the stress test mode inside the Intel Extreme Tuning Utility in both 15 and 30 minutes. As expected, the 12th gen Intel Core i7 12700H spikes a bit hot, reaching the 90s, and I also noticed some thermal and power throttling, but ultimately passed the tests. Now, in terms of real-world performance, exporting our standard 13.92 minute 4K project in Adobe Media Encoder, the max temperature is quite hot but it is averaging just around the 80s and the project was able to export in just under 8 minutes. Now, when it comes to gaming, the new Asus Tough Gaming F15 pushes FPS way over its maximum display refresh rate when it comes to most FPS esports titles. Granted, they are easier to drive compared to AAA titles, but nevertheless, you can definitely take advantage of that 300Hz refresh rate. And even with Ray Tracing Ultra and DLSS Auto, you can play at close to 60fps in Cyberpunk 2077. Of course, this is in 1080p resolution, so that's to be expected. The thermal performance for the 12th gen Intel Core i7-12700H as expected is toasty at max, but again, pretty good average temps while still being able to reach decent frame rates as you've seen earlier. The NVIDIA GeForce RTX 3060 on the other hand is quite cool all across the board. Now here's a quick crystal disk mark run in case you're wondering how fast the SSD is on this laptop. And lastly, in terms of battery life, I opted to test it using the PC Mark battery life benchmark, again because it is easy to replicate in a much more controlled manner and as you can see, for modern office tasks, the ASUS Tough Gaming F15 can give you about 6 hours or so, 5-6 to six hours in continuous video playback and around an hour and a half for gaming. You can also see here how both the silent and performance mode differs when it comes to battery life. Turbo mode is not available here because it is not available when the laptop is unplugged. Overall, while the processor spikes a bit hot here and there for the ASUS Tough Gaming F15, I honestly feel like it doesn't take a significant hit in terms of overall performance. The results and overall experience pretty much check out from what we expect and the performance is considerably better compared to its predecessor and other similarly spec competitors out in the market. The noise levels are fairly low too in most non-demanding applications which adds to the overall better experience. It's not perfect though, the speakers are honestly subpar and I feel like they could have made the exhaust a bit bigger to make room for better airflow, especially on the sides. Other than that, the ASUS Tough Gaming F15 is one of the better options out there when you consider its overall price to performance ratio. And there you have it guys, thank you for watching. Huge thanks to ASUS for allowing me to experience this laptop. You can get this using the link below. Thank you for watching, subscribe if you like this, and see you next time. Have a great day guys, you're awesome.